Hi. My name is Shamara. I'm psychology student at Islamic University of Riyadh. My NPM are 208,110,209. I'd like to give you a brief breakdown of interpersonal attraction. Interpersonal attraction is a relationship between two people characterized by a general liking but with a range of variations that can include respect, love, lust, and affection. This is not necessarily a romantic attraction but can be platonic as well. There are many factors that can influence interpersonal attraction. Research has shown that contrary to the saying opposites attract people, are typically attracted to people who are similar in attitudes and beliefs. Individuals are attracted to people who make them feel good or that they receive a benefit from. Propinquity plays an important role in interpersonal attraction in that more exposure to a person makes you more likely to be attracted to and like that person. Repeated exposure creates familiarity which increases the likelihood of interpersonal attraction. Interpersonal attraction plays a key role in relationship formation. There are many factors which determine interpersonal attraction. These can be divided into internal and external determinants and factors based on interaction with others. Determinants of Attraction Internal Determinants of Attraction First, the need to affiliate. According to many researchers, the tendency to affiliate has a neurobiological basis. The need to affiliate with others is one of the main concerns of humans and is crucial to psychological well-being. This also has an evolutionary advantage since interaction and cooperation with others helps in leading a better life and secure life. The need of forming and maintaining a least quantity of interpersonal relationships among human beings is innately present. Hence the need to belong is found in some degree in all humans in all cultures, although there could be prevalence of individual differences in intensity and strength with individual and cultural variations in how people first express and then fulfill this need. Second, Role of Affect in Attraction this happens when another person is simply present at the same time that when a person's emotional state is aroused by someone or something. We evaluate that person positively when we are in a good mood and negatively when in a bad mood. Examples of this phenomenon can be found in experiments on subliminal perception of pleasant versus unpleasant pictures. The explanation for this is based on classical conditioning. The relationship between effect and attraction also has implications for social influence. The attempts at persuasion use the strategy of arousing positive mood states whether it is the advertisers or salespersons who want us to buy a particular product, or politicians who want us to vote for them. External Determinants of Attraction First, Proximity It is generally said that close proximity fosters liking. Two people are likely to be acquainted if there is physical proximity between them. Whether it is classroom seats, hostel rooms, residential flats or office desks, proximity is a very important factor in attraction. However, with the advent of internet and social media this may not stand to be very true but still it is. A very important factor in attraction. However, with the advent of internet and social media this may not stand to be very true but still it is a very important factor. Students sitting on adjoining chairs are more likely to become friends. According to Science, 1968, repeated exposure to a new stimulus results in an increasingly positive evaluation of that stimulus. Research by Moreland and Beach, 1992, has shown that the more times a particular assistant attended class the more she was liked. With repeated exposure there is a decrease in negative emotions while an increase in positive emotions increase. However, it has been seen that the repeated exposure effect does not work when a person's initial reaction to the stimulus is negative. Second, Physical Attractiveness Physical attractiveness is a very powerful factor which determines our liking for others. Researchers have found that most people assume that what is beautiful is good. People have a strong tendency to attribute positive qualities to physically attractive people and negative qualities to physically unattractive people. Attractiveness is generally associated with positive traits, good, interpersonal skills and high self-esteem. This could be because such characteristics are developed because of the way other people have reacted to their appearance. That physical attractiveness is linked to positive traits is not always the case. In some cases, physical attractiveness is also linked with negative assumptions for example beautiful women are perceived as materialistic. Other factors related to appearance that influence attractiveness. Apart from the main factors affecting interpersonal attraction, there are many other factors. Since physical appearance plays such an important role in interpersonal attraction, people make a lot of efforts to enhance their physical appearance. Even physically attractive people worry about their appearance. 
Most people experience appearance rejection sensitivity. They worry about their appearance and fear that they might be rejected by others. Factors based on interaction with others. First, similarity. There is a famous saying that states birds of same feather flock together. There is strong evidence that similarity and not complementarity is the basis of attraction. Many researches have shown that attraction is determined by proportion of similarity when the number of topics on which two people have similar views is divided by the total number of topics on which they have communicated. The resulting proportion is put in a simple formula. The higher the proportion of similarity, the greater the liking. Bernan Nelson, 1965. Rosenbaum, 1986, proposed the repulsion hypothesis as an alternative to this. According to this hypothesis, information about similarity has no effect. People are repulsed by information about dissimilarity. Second, reciprocity. Reciprocity effect refers to the tendency where people tend to be attracted towards others who tend to like them. In the 1950s, researchers argued that people are attracted to each other on the basis of complementarity of needs. According to this principle, we tend to like those who like us and dislike those who dislike us. This emphasis on the reward potential of being liked by others is emphasized by interdependence theory and social exchange theory which states that the social approval of others is a generalized reinforcer. In one set of studies, Wallster and colleagues, 1973, sought to demonstrate that men tend to be attracted to women who play hard to get but their conclusion based upon six studies was that men are attracted to women who are easy for them to get but hard for other men to get. The above findings suggest only if the liking makes them feel special, people tend to be attracted to others who like them. Next is familiarity. One of the main reasons why familiarity promotes attraction is that the humans have an inbuilt need to bond with others. In one of the studies, pairs of completely unknown strangers had an experience of greater attraction toward one another when they were randomly assigned to stare into eyes of each other for at least two minutes than if they were assigned to stare at one another's hands or were engaged in DNA symmetric eye contacts. Kellerman, Lewis, and Laird, 1989. The results of this Give an idea that experience of brief intimate moments with the other individual causes sense of attraction towards that individual even if the choice of the individual was to not interact with the other individual. Theories of Interpersonal Attraction There are many theories to explain interpersonal attraction like social exchange theory, balance or cognitive consistency theory, equity theory, and evolutionary theory. 1. Social Exchange Theory Social exchange theory states that people's feeling about a particular relationship is dependent on their evaluation of the cost and rewards of being in that particular relationship, the perception of them being into a type of relationship they believe to be deserving and their chances of them being in a better relationship with some other better person. The relationship's outcome is found through subtracting the costs from the rewards. The level of satisfaction obtained through the outcome is dependent on individual's comparison level and the likeliness of the individual to stay in an unsatisfactory relationship is detrimental by the level of comparison for alternatives. The theory is mostly supported by the research evidence. 2. Equity Theory This theory argues that happiest are the people when they are into relationships where the rewards, costs and the contributions that both the parties make to the relationship are roughly equal. According to equity theory, both under and over benefited partners might be motivated to restore equity. Though research finds that this is truer for the ones under benefited. 3. Evolutionary Theory The evolutionary theory states that attraction to the opposite sex occurs when someone has physical features which indicate that he or she is very fertile. This happens since it increases the chance of one's genes being passed down to the next generation. This theory also suggests that fertility in a mate is more important to men than to women. According to this theory, a woman places more emphasis on a man's ability to provide resources and protection since these are important in ensuring the successful raising of the offsprings. The balance theory discussed above is another important theory of interpersonal attraction. Thus, interpersonal attraction plays a key role in relationship formation. Given the importance of interpersonal attraction, finding out who is attractive and what factors lead to attraction has always been and will continue to be an important area of research. Finally we come to the end of video. Well, thank you very much for watching this video. See you later.